Hello and welcome to section 4, APIs in the real world. In the previous section, we learned how to build and test our own APIs. In this section, we will take a close look at some real world APIs so that we can see the similarities and differences between what we built and what is out there. We are going to take a look at two APIs, Facebook Graph API and GitHub API. Then, we will look at IFTTT, which stands for If This Then, then That an application whose sole purpose is to connect different APIs. Now we move on to the first video of this section that deals with Facebook's Graph API. In this video, we are going to take a look at Facebook's concept of an API as a graph and how it affects the decisions of the REST resources. We will look at performing actions for reading, inserting, updating, and deleting nodes. Then, we will look at Facebook's sophisticated permission system. Finally, we will use the Graph API Explorer to call Facebook's API. Facebook's Graph API has three main components, nodes, edges, and fields. A node represents any object on Facebook. There is a node for every user, photo, page, comment, post, like, share, and anything we can think of. Edges are connections between nodes in the graph. We can think of an edge as a collection of related nodes. For example, the posts edge of a user node is a collection of that user's posts. The comments edge of a post, post node is a collection of the comments on that post. Fields are the key value pairs that define the data in a node. To understand how the Facebook graph looks like, it helps to see a visual representation. The graph on the left is a typical graph, and the one on the right is Facebook's graph. In Facebook's graph, an edge does not lead to a node. It leads to a list of nodes. For instance, if the node in the center was a user node, one of the white edges can be the photos edge, and the other can be the post edge. Each of these edges leads to three nodes. Alright, now that we can see how the graph looks like from a data standpoint, let's see how it looks like from a communication standpoint. The graph API has two kinds of resources, nodes and edges. A node resource is simply accessed using the slash ID route. For example, the ID shown here refers to my user node on Facebook. An edge resource is accessed by using the node and following it by a slash and the edge's name. For example, slash posts after my user node ID refers to my posts. Notice that there is a big difference between the APIs we used earlier and this API. In the API that we designed, we specified the collection's name first and the object's ID next. In Facebook's API, on the other hand, we specify the object's ID first and the collection's name next. So there are resources for nodes and edges, but what about fields? Since fields are trivial, there are no dedicated resources for them. However, all resources on the Graph API accept the fields query parameters. This is a comma-separated list of field keys. In this example, the API will only return the ID and name fields of the user node being accessed. So, what actions can we perform on these routes? As in all APIs, there are four common actions. We can read a node or an edge by sending a GET request to the resource. We can insert a node to an edge by posting to the edge resource. Unlike our previous APIs, Facebook's Graph API does not use the request body. All the data has to be in the URL. We cannot insert edges since those are predefined by Facebook. We can update a node by sending a POST request to the node resource. Update is very much like insert, except that the node resource is used. We can delete a node by sending a delete request to the node resource. Now comes the million dollar question. Since all API resources need an ID, where do we start when we do not have any IDs? The answer to that question is to start with the user. Facebook's Graph API attaches a special meaning to the slash me route. When Facebook gets a request on that route, it will translate the me to the logged in user's ID. So, this route will return the user node of the logged in user. From there, we can access everything that the user gave us permission to. Let's talk about permissions, but before we do that, let's go to developers.facebook.com slash tools slash explorer. This tool is a web UI that lets us play with Facebook's Graph API. Let's click on get token and get user access token. We should see a huge list of permissions. Whereas Twitter only had 3 permissions, Facebook has more than 25 permissions, each with possibly more than one value. 
user about me gives the user's name. The other fields are kind of self-explanatory. User friends field gives everyone a hard time. Everybody thinks at first glance that this gives access to the user's friends. This is not true. This permission only gives access to the user's friends who use the R app. Let's check the users about me and users posts permissions. Let's check the publish underscore actions permission, which allows us to post as a user. We will click on get access token. Let's click OK. Facebook asks the users to choose the privacy settings of the content that our app shares. We will choose only me so that our friends don't think we've gone crazy. Let's hit OK. Now we should see an access token added here. Let's hit the slash me route. We should see the response, which includes our name and our node's ID. Let's try to access the feed edge of our node. We'll hit slash me slash feed submit. Cool, our feed looks right. If we use the ID that we got earlier instead of me in this route, we will get the same response. Now, let's do something more interesting. Let's insert something into our feed. To do that, we'll change the method from get to post, and we will add a message field that has the content of our posts. Let's post Adele's version of Hello World. Okay, we'll hit submit. We got the node's ID back, which means it was inserted successfully. Let's go back and get our feed. Here it is. Just to make sure that it really made its way to Facebook, we'll go to our Facebook profile. Oh, here it is. And the lock shows that only we can see it. In this video, we have learned about Facebook's graph API. We saw how nodes and edges represent data, how the graph starts with the user, and how permissions are used in Facebook.